I'm Sam Asravadam, professor of medicine at Mayo Medical School and consultant in cardiac electrophysiology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, talking about an article that our group uh, have published presently online and in print in the November issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The co-authors, along with myself, are Dr. Suraj Kapa, presently at the University of Pennsylvania and worked with us while he was here at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Paul Muller, and Dr. David Hayes, both from Mayo Clinic with a long interest in this field of withdrawing pacemaker and ICD support at the end of life. This article tries to explore the complex issues related to whether patients can request and have that request fulfilled to turn off their pacemakers or defibrillators which they may have had for some time. While this has been explored previously from a healthcare professional standpoint, our study looked at the opinions of patients themselves and the opinions of legal professionals, specifically practicing lawyers. The way this study was conducted was a survey that was sent out to various groups of people. These included practicing lawyers, patients, physicians, and other health care givers. The survey was done with simulated case scenarios. For example, if there were identical twins, one patient of the one of those twins has developed terminal lung cancer and happens to have a pacemaker. Without the pacemaker working, the patient would probably have died uh, several years ago. Now, in the throes of this terminal malignancy, requests that his pacemaker be turned off. We asked these various groups their thoughts on whether they would approve of turning off the pacemaker in this situation and whether they felt that this was equivalent to say a patient refusing a therapy or whether they felt this was equivalent to euthanasia. We then explored the twin of this patient who doesn't have a pacemaker but has the same terminal malignancy and doesn't wish to suffer from the uh, issues that come up with terminal lung cancer but does not have the option of turning off a pacemaker and shortening their lifespan. The complexity of these issues and to see what the differences in perspectives are from these groups. In terms of the impact for patients, what we learned from the survey is that it takes a fairly detailed knowledge of what exactly these devices do, the differences between defibrillators and pacemakers, and what the patients can expect to experience should these devices be turned off. We also learned that there were significant differences between the way a similar issue is looked at by a legal versus a medical professional. Given the differences in approaches, for example, physicians and medical caregivers saw a clear difference between turning off a defibrillator versus turning off a pacemaker in a patient who is dependent on the pacemaker, whereas legal professionals tended to see less difference between these approaches. The two possibilities that require complete study in future studies are, number one, how are there legal issues that need to be explored more clearly and explicitly, perhaps in the context of a simulated trial? And secondly, what level of understanding of the medical issues including the subtle differences between device types that patients with heart rhythm problems have is necessary for legal professionals to allow them to interpret the exact situation in the context of existing law. 
if you are a patient it's very important to have a discussion with your physician or other caregiver on how you would like devices that you have implanted in you now managed should you be in an end of life situation in the future this discussion should be specific for the device and specific for situations that may arise if you are a caregiver it's equally important in patients that you perhaps like in my practice implant these devices even before they are implanted discuss the options available when an end of life or terminal situation occurs and if you are a member of the legal community it's important i think to assess the potential impact socially should a case of conflict between a patient physician or patient and family members etc wishes occur as to whether or not a life supporting implanted device should be turned off or not in an end of life situation specifically the issues of fairness and whether it's equitable that is is there a specific privilege that's being given to a patient who has a device to shorten their life that's not available for someone who doesn't have that device but has the same desire and second how much informed consent is needed for a patient to make a decision about stopping therapy that was previously agreed even when it has no direct bearing on a new diagnosis or disease that occurs to leave with one example if a patient does not have terminal cancer but has a pacemaker that they are dependent on do they have the right and would we and what would the medical community's duty be in agreeing to a request to simply turn off the device We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.